Hey guys, it's Dr. Ryan, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about a question that gets posed to me pretty frequently in my clinic, and that is really talking about uh, fats in general and what sort of fats are the healthiest and whether or not saturated fats from animals is, is really unhealthy. And so here's an actual question that was emailed to me by one of my patients. Is saturated fat from animals really that bad? Some of my friends are into keto or carnivore diets and eat red meat and pork and drink full fat milk and swear by it. Okay, so to answer this question, let's talk a little bit about the differences between saturated fat and polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats. So what, are, what exactly are saturated fats? Well, uh, basically there are these chains of hydrocarbons and uh, Basically, with saturated fats, uh, there are no carbon-carbon double bonds, right? Whereas with monounsaturated fats, you may you'll have one carbon-carbon double bond, and with polyunsaturated fats, you'll have many carbon-carbon double bonds. And you can see two here for linoleic acid. Okay, and typically the idea is that a mono and polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids have been considered to be healthy, and saturated fats have con been considered to be unhealthy uh, by the by conventional physicians. But recently, that that may have changed. Right? You'll find saturated fats primarily in animal um, products, so beef, pork, poultry, full-fat dairy products, eggs, tropical oils, and like coconut or palm oil. Monounsaturated fats would be found things like mac olive or macadamia nut oil, and polyunsaturated fats are found primarily in flax seeds, fish oil, or walnuts, right? And some of these can have a mixture of different fats, right? With the predominance, of course, being saturated fats in these and monounsaturated fats and and these uh, choices and polyunsaturated fats and, and these guys, but there can be a, a mixture though. And polyunsaturated fats are particularly important because the famous omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory involved in many different cellular functions are, are part of this group. So as I mentioned from a conventional standpoint, the American Heart Association, they uh, their contention is the following, that saturated fats are for the most part, very unhealthy. And as you can see it right here, um, their thought process is uh, replacing foods that are high in saturated fat with healthier options can lower the risk of uh, heart disease, right? And they feel that there's been multiple research suggesting it can increase LDL and they haven't changed it. They, they do recognize that there is some controversy. Uh, there is a lot of conflicting information about saturated fats, should I eat them or not? Uh, but uh, regardless, they still recommend limiting them uh, be, uh, due to the fact that there seems to be a series of uh, many, many decades of research suggesting that they are correlated with, uh, with um, coronary heart disease. And um, there, this is actually a great article in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and uh, a pretty prominent physician all across along with this uh, nutritionist Penny Chris Etherton um, went ahead to, and it's a it's an article but it almost reads like a review article in which they uh, they answer the question public health guidelines should recommend reducing saturated fat or should public health guidelines recommend reducing saturated fat consumption as much as possible and they take both sides both the yes and the no side so in the yes side they uh, feel that the, um, the reasons that it should be reduced is there's a, a large amount of evidence from many clinical studies suggesting that they increase LDL and, um, and they feel that that's a, a, a linkage to coronary heart disease. Um, there, uh, there appears to be research also suggesting that when you, when you replace saturated fats, with uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids or monounsaturated fatty acids or even carbohydrates, it appears that these seem to reduce LDL as well, right? And so that was their, uh, that was their contention on, on this, and just in, in terms of a summary in, in this article, and I urge you guys to take a look at this. You can get for, uh, it's, it's a free article on PubMed, and I'll put the citation at the bottom of the YouTube video. They also took the opposite side uh, by stating that um, the, uh, the, the fact that saturated fatty acids do reduce LDL cholesterol is, is good. However, 
uh, it does, there isn't a lot of um, the evidence that suggests that a reduction in saturated fatty acids is therefore then linked to a redu reduction in coronary heart disease is somewhat inconclusive because it seems that there's contentious evidence. There is a lot of evidence suggesting it reduces LDL, but then in turn, does it actually reduce the incidence of cardiovascular disease? That's, that's a, so there's, um, there needs to be more evidence uh, in that regard. Also, their concern is um, there is a lot of heterogeneity in the population, and certain individuals may uh, respond differently to a complete reduction of saturated fatty acids. And so uh, recommending this population wide may have, um, may have considerations or, or issues that we may not understand fully, and so more research is necessary. So that was their thought on reducing it. Uh, uh, not reducing saturated fat consumption as much as possible, which, you know, has, has some merits as well. That being said, there still continues to be a lot of research out there suggesting that saturated fats probably are not the best in terms of atherosclerosis. So here's a fairly recent paper in the Journal of Pediatrics, uh, and it was published in 2020, and it actually linked uh, saturated uh, fats to atherosclerosis um, in children. And this was kind of an interesting study. It was a um, prospective randomized control trial. And what they did was they looked at healthy children from infancy to young adulthood. And what they were, what they did was they looked at the amount of dietary fat in their, in the diets and these children's diets. And um, they uh, tried to institute these targets where the ratio of saturated fatty acids to monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids was less than one to two, so it's a fairly smaller amount. And an intake of saturated fatty acids was less than 10% of the energy intake, right? And what they did was they um, measured, they instituted these dietary recommendations and they measured the intimomedial thickness. So that, that's the thickness of the, uh, the inner wall of the aorta, essentially, and the distensibility of the abdominal aorta, both of which are markers of atherosclerosis or scarring of the arteries. And so they want to see uh, that over time and see if that there's a correlation between thicker uh, inner walls, which would be ba a bad thing, more arterial scarring, and decreased the sensibility, also a bad thing, which would be uh, associated with atherosclerosis, and the types of dietary fats these kids were utilizing. So what they found was that individuals who achieved the main intervention target, of course, as we talked about, keeping those um, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids uh, in a, uh, versus, or the saturated fatty acids to the polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fatty acids in a ratio of less than one to two, and keeping their saturated fatty acids less than 10% of energy intake. So the people who met that criteria seem to have significantly lower aortic IMT, so intermedial thickness, as well as uh, uh, better aortic distensibility. So they had a uh, decreased, uh, uh, they had decreased signs of atherosclerosis, which is which is kind of interesting, actually really cool. And so that, you know, from, from my mind is, is one reason why maybe reducing saturated fat intake would be a good idea. And then uh, here's another article uh, that looked at um, changes in cardiometabolic disease risk after just a very short period. Um, and what they did was they looked at um, the uh, 12 overweighted uh, young adults and they put them on a fairly short diet of a high saturated fatty acid um, diet, uh, which comprises a large amount of fat, uh, saturated fatty acids. So prior to uh, following this diet, all the adults were eating um, a diet which had less than 40% of their calories coming from saturated fatty acids, whereas um, in this particular, uh, sort of less than 40% of their dietary fats coming from saturated fatty acids. The uh, two week of the high saturated fatty acid diet was where 60% of their dietary fat came from high saturated uh, or came from saturated fatty acids with a significant increase, right? And what they found was that total plasma cholesterol concentration increased significantly after just one week in addition to AST concentration, right? Now, they did measure a couple of other markers, insulin resistance, blood pressure, um, total plasma uh, cholesterol, as well as uh, fatty acid profile within plasma and skeletal muscle lipid pools.
But the key things that came, went up were LDL cholesterol and AST, right? And that was significantly increased. And what was uh, interesting in this regard, it was a really short period of time. It was only two weeks and those two markers rose. Uh, AST, of course, being a marker of liver damage. And that, that's uh, pretty uh, interesting. And maybe an, another reason as to why maybe saturated fatty acids uh, probably aren't something you should eat a ton of. Um, and then there's, this is just two of many, many articles that have had similar results. And um, another th thing to point out is uh, just, a, just the fact that adipose tissue is generally a site of uh, toxic or toxin accumulation. Um, so there, uh, here's an article that uh, demonstrated this. It just talked about how persistent organic pollutants, really these are byproducts of, of plastics, so things like um, polychlorinated biphenyls, polychlorinated dibenzo-B-dioxins, furans, polybrominated biphenyls, diphenyl ethers. These are all byproducts of plastics which are associated with many different uh, conditions, cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. These are definitely not things that you want to have in large concentration in the body. And they tend to accumulate in the adipose tissue. Um, and this particular article just talked about how it accumulated primarily in humans, but there are many articles that suggested that it accumulates in, in mammals as well. So animals uh, with high, um, th these particular uh, biotoxins tend to accumulate in their, in their adipose tissue, in their fat stores, right? And so as we talked about, saturated fats are primarily from, from animal fat, right? And so, uh, uh, by corollary, that may, that it's quite possible that these toxins may be in the animal fat. However, um, you would have to be exposed to this. So with humans, of course, we're exposed to these plastic uh, um, compounds and all sorts of things through the materials we use, perhaps the plastic containers we use, the glasses, the, styro uh, the styrofoam containers, the receipts. So we're touching them, we're exposed to them all the time, uh, maybe just our environment, et cetera, et cetera, right? But what about animals? I mean, animals aren't, you know, going shopping at Target and touching receipts or going to Starbucks and getting those uh, coffee cups or, um, they're not doing that. Um, but they are actually exposed to uh, the uh, particularly plastic byproducts. So um, what, some, what a lot of people don't recognize is that it is legal to, add plastic content in animal feed. So here's an article uh, from The Guardian, and this is actually referring to uh, plastic additives in farm oil feed in the UK, where it's perfectly fine to do so. I guess the article came up because this particular farmer, Andrew Rock, um, contacted The Guardian because he noted plastic shreds in his animal feed, and he thought there was something wrong with it. Um, but the reality was, and you can kind of see some of the samples that he had here, this is perfectly fine. It's perfect. Uh, apparently, it is um, okay to have a limit of 0.15% of plastics in animal feed. But as you can kind of tell, there, in this particular uh, sample of the animal feed, there's, there's quite a bit more. And what's uh, not noted here is the limit of plastic that's uh, just by itself is only 0.15%. But uh, food that is uh, spoiled or rotten can be ground down to create animal feed, and that food can still be wrapped in plastic, right? And they don't count that towards the 0.15% of the plastic. Well, that's that's Europe, so that's that's you know, that's that's different perhaps than the U.S. But is it true also for the U.S.? Well, actually, it is. So here's an article which talks about how uh, so some of the things that we can add to animal feed right? And how perhaps some of these things probably shouldn't be. And so um, now this was a little bit uh, older. This was published in May 2007. So there may have been some changes, but from when I last checked, it wasn't dramatic. So here's some things that are perfectly legal to add to animal feed. So the initial things are like, well, this, this seems pretty normal, like forage and grains and plant protein products, right? Um, you can also add like uh, fruit and fruit byproducts. All right, that's that's not too bad, right? But then uh, you can also add rendered animal protein as well. And this would be used, you know, for pig and uh, cow cow feed. So meat, meat tankage, meat and boat meal, bone meal, uh, <laughs> animal digest from dead, dying, diseased, and or disabled animals, including deer and elk. Um, so okay, 
that's uh, that's not as um, pleasant, but okay, it's part of it. Animal waste. So dried ruminant waste, dried swine waste, dried poultry litter. Uh, so pairs, these are all, this is animal excrement that they can actually use as part of animal food. Okay, marine byproducts of so fish meal, fish residue meal. I don't even want to know what that is. Uh, shrimp meal, crab meal, fish byproducts. Okay, that can be part of animal waste. And then, um, then here, here's where we start to get into the uh, more unsavory things. So um, edible food waste from uh, restaurants, bakeries, and uh, cafeterias food adulterated with rodent, roach, or bird excreta that has been heat treated to destroy pathogenic organism, organisms. Okay. And then uh, one thing to note is with the restaurant food waste, they do not need to remove the plastic coverings of the food. Many times it's just ground up, right? That doesn't go towards uh, uh, plastics right here. And then uh, here's some other stuff that's actually uh, okay to add in. So you can actually add in polyethylene roughage replacement, nutraceuticals, uh, preservatives, um, let's see, non-protein nitrogen, urea, aluminum chloride, aluminum sulfate, copper compounds. Uh, so just many, many things that can be added to animal feed that probably aren't the, the healthiest. And the point I guess I'm trying to, be, uh, trying to make, of course, is that, uh, well, these, uh, these pollutants, these pollutants all may find their way into the animal fat because as this article notes, adipose tissue is a site of toxic accumulation. So anyway, going back to my thoughts on this, what do I think about saturated fats uh, in terms of your diet? Well, um, because of the fact that it, there is still research suggesting that it increases LDL and uh, it's associated with uh, changes in um, liver function tests. It's also, there were a couple other studies suggesting that it can worsen insulin resistance, lead to higher inflammation, and more than likely, uh, when you eat animal fat, you're also ingesting uh, residues of <laughs> organic pollutants. My thought is to probably avoid it if you can. I'm much more a fan of ingesting polyunsaturated fats. My favorite is flaxseed oil or walnuts, or, and remember, you want to get wall, raw nuts so when you, when you, they're roasted, they're denatured. Um, macadamia nuts, Brazil nuts, um, almonds, things that are, that have a good omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. Remember, you want more omega-3s than omega-6s, fatty acids, because those tend to be uh, less inflammatory. And um, try to limit the amount of saturated fats you eat. It's okay to have, you know, that, that fatty uh, steak perhaps as a cheat meal, but for the most part, try to get uh, animal proteins that are from that are on the leaner side. So, chicken breast, turkey breast, whey protein isolate, egg whites. Those would be the kind of things that I would suggest. Okay. Well, hopefully this has been helpful and uh, just gives you some food for thought, you know, literally in regards to what you should add or, not, or subtract from your diet.